What's up guys, Shane here from Figuredeck 3D Printing, and today we're gonna take a look at the Forger Tech 2020 i3 that you guys sent me. So hey guys, welcome back. As I said here, we have the Forger Tech 2020 i3, which a bunch of you guys, my fans, sent me as my baby gift paternity leave uh, for when we had Madeline this past summer. Now I did want to say a special thanks to you folks and I have it pulled up here so I want to say thank you to you guys. Uh, Scott Leonard, thank you. John Teloco, Teloka, thank you. Joe Kayfield, I am horrible at names, but thank you. Mark Boas, thank you. Spencer Cook, thank you. John Mandrake, thank you. And Rayleigh Amden, for setting this all together, or Riley. I always say his name wrong. Riley Amden, thank you for setting up the GoFundMe. All you guys raised $245 of the $220 goal, and that was able to purchase this 2020 i3, filament, an extra hot end, the LCD for it, and all of that shipped to me from John at Forger Tech. And then John from Forger Tech sent me six rolls of Folger Tech PLA. So thank you, John, and thank you, Folger Tech, for all you guys do for the community. I personally love your printers. The FT5 is my workhorse. This 2020 i3 has gotten quite the makeover, and I think it's gonna be a good addition here to my shop. Now that we have the thank yous out of the way, let's take a look at the different things that I've done to this printer to make it work a little bit better and what I wanted. All right, so I'm gonna be talking to you guys mainly here. I'll show you a couple other close-ups here on the little camera. Sadly, I don't have my tripod for that. I don't know where it is, the little one. I should probably buy one. Anyways, let's get started to the details. So the very first thing I replaced were the M5 screws or the M5 lead screws that came. I guess it's really threaded rod. And as you can see, it is absolutely tiny and just, they're not great. So I went ahead and upgraded them here to T8 eight millimeter four start lead screws. Now in doing that, I had to change my steps because there's obviously a lot less steps for this than there is for this M5 because the threading is so tight together. But having the larger lead screws, they are much straighter than the M5 threaded rod and it adds a lot more rigidity to the Z axis because these little tiny things holding it up was not a whole lot. Having these great big M8s on here, they're great. They do a lot more stability for that. So in order to do that, I had to print new uh, here on the X, both the, these, or I guess these are the Z carriages right here. I had to reprint those so that they could accept the, the T8 four start threaded nuts that go in here. And then it also added in a belt tensioner and then it also made me reprint a new X carriage with a new end stop here for the X. And then I wanted to have my Z be a little bit better because the Z, uh, the actual printed piece that comes with it is not great. It slides a little bit too much. So I went ahead and printed out an adjustable Z and here on the back, you can see actually where that other Z part connects to it. And it's just a simple screw that you uh, can turn down to make it uh, adjust the Z height. Another thing I added is I went ahead and added on a Y belt tensioner because the stock one doesn't really uh, do a whole lot for you. So this belt tensioner, as you can see here it is, I just have to tighten down this bolt and it pulls that nice and tight. And then on the back, I went ahead and added on a cable chain guide and that was just more just to keep the the wires where they should be and not moving around all over the place and just makes it look a little bit neater it's also able to tidy up a lot of the cables going around and up i did keep the stock y end stop because that one's fine it doesn't need to be changed that worked out really well but again i was able to wire all these cables up nice and tight try and get everything as compact as possible i 3d printed the uh, stands right here for the uh, LCD, which does not come with a printer kit, so that was an additional purchase. I think it was like maybe five or ten dollars, but it is an additional purchase that you have to make. I uh, highly recommend it if you don't want to print tethered, because printing tethered I think is just goofy. So I had to reprint that, and then I re and then I printed these Z, Z axis extenders, which gives you a little bit more Z height. So it takes basically where the motor would be down here, it takes it way up here and gets it out of the way. So you get a little bit more of your Z build height back because the Z height on this printer uh, stock is not very much. So you can see I am using the stock 2020 lumen extrusion spool holder here, which works well enough. Uh, I don't really haven't found a need to replace it yet, but you do see the weird way that the cable has to run down here. I could try and put it up over here somewhere or 3D print something to run it 
over the motor. So the reason why I have to run it here in the front instead of the back is because if you have a smaller spool or a brand new spool that's really, really full, you could have the potentiality of slipping the filament off. As you can see, it comes underneath here and then it's gonna get tangled up around the 2020 extrusion. That's not a good thing because then you're gonna have a failed print. I have found that the best way has either been to run it here or actually run it through this new Z-axis print, run it through there into, the, into it, and that actually works out really well. I do want to try and uh, model something to run it up here on top of the motor. That way it just keeps a nice straight or something that I could do a reverse Bowden tube attached to and keep it you know, nice and straight. Something like that. It's something I need to model eventually. My modeling skills are not great. It takes me a while to get to things. so. That's a eventuality, something that I will uh, do. Uh, I also have on here some anti-vibration feet. They just snap on to 20 lunar extrusion, and I have four of them on there. They're not great, they don't last very long. The first set I had lasted me about two, maybe three months before one of them really got bent, and they do help absorb a lot of the movement in the printer because this doesn't, I can't remember if this actually came with feet or not. I don't think it did, it just sat straight down. Oh, uh, shoot, I just wish I could remember. I got this in, in uh, July, so I don't really remember what all the original parts were for, because I did a couple of test prints, they came out horrible. Did some tweaking, still didn't like it, so then I started upgrading parts, because I was like, you know what, that's the whole reason why I wanted this to begin with. I wanted to buy one myself, just because this is like an amazing platform. It's all open source. I mean, all the hardware is super easy to modify. There are a thousand mods already out there for it if you can't design one yourself. And because it's 22 lumen extrusion, you can do anything you want. I mean, anything that you want to do can snap to lumen extrusion. It's super simple to do. But so I'm not 100% happy with these feet. They will do for now. I might end up putting on the FT5 feet, which actually use a yellow practice golf ball and see if that helps out any better. It will make the printer higher off the ground, but also will help absorb a lot more of the noise and everything from it. And as you can see here, I tried my best to tidy up the wiring as best as I could. It's really hard because there's no enclosure or anything for this. I think I have seen people actually make an enclosure for the ramps, but I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do about that. There's just a lot of stuff everywhere. And I have extra uh, stranded ethernet here that I'm using for the part cooling fans, which it does not come with stock. So after all those mods and everything that happens, how does the printer print? I have to say pretty doggone nice. So, I mean, just looking here, this skull, he did, he came out absolutely fantastic. This is the Celtic skull. The, the overhangs here on the eyes came out perfect. This jaw came out absolutely perfect. This jaw did not, simply because it sits here, the fan is on this side, the other fan from this side broke. So this was not getting as much cooling as it should have, so I had this stringing happen there. But I mean, it is super smooth. And then here I have a Serenity uh, low poly replica, which prints like that, and then the bottom prints, you uh, glue it together. But with support, I mean, it came out super nice. Like there's no banding in this at all. There's a little bit of roughness around it. Like it's, I still might need to slow it down a little bit. I'm printing around 60 to 70 millimeters a second. I probably should be printing like 50 to make this like an optimal thing. But I am super impressed with the prints that are coming off this thing now. I mean, I almost put it on par with my FT5. Like it is going to be an epic workhorse for me and I can't wait to do more to it. So yeah, I didn't upgrade the ramps board. I think the ramps board is fine. You just need to be sure that your connectors, the wires in the, in the green Phoenix style connectors are in there nice and tight and securely straight. If they are off to an angle, you will see a lot of people, especially in the Folger Tech group, that post picture this as it melted because their wires were not straight. I took care it could happen to anyone. I'm not saying it can't happen to me. I'm not an electrician. I just do a lot of electronic things. So it's not saying it's not gonna happen to me eventually, but I probably have a good four or 500 hours on this already. And I haven't had any real issues at all with that. So again, just be careful with that. Um, but that's stock, the PSU is stock, the mount for the PSU is stock. It's just using some uh, corner brackets, some 2020 corner brackets to hold it on. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. So one thing I do wanna change though is the, the plug is just the plug. There's no power switch. So I have found a few things on Thingiverse that I could do. I have uh, two power switches here, fused power switches that I could use for that. And it would just end up mounting right back here beside the uh, PSU and beside the end stop, just right there, run this wire into that, and then it could ha it ha will have a uh, IEC connector for a regular old PC, uh, PC power cable to plug in there. 
and then have a fused on off switch, which would be a lot better because when I'm not using it, I end up just unplugging it, which is not something that I really wanted to have to do. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like I said, this thing is printing absolutely fantastic. I love it so much. I'm still working on one other issue though, that if you look at my skull here, the back half of his head, part of his head is missing. In Simplify 3D, I have the offset set because the printer homes like 22 millimeters in front of the build plate and I think uh, 11 or something to the left of it. So I have adjusted that in Simplify 3D, but due to that adjustment, the build plate, even though this looks like it fits on the build plate, it actually doesn't in the software. It ends up just cutting it straight off which is really weird. I'm trying to get through that. That's me with a Simplify 3D setting. I just need to figure out because I have the offset set. I think I just need to add what I took away to move the X and Y forward into the to the bottom and to the right. I need to add that to my X and Y to make the build play a little bit longer. That way it thinks it can actually print that far and should work more better, I think but we'll, um, I'll just investigate that. But again, thank you to you guys that participated in the GoFundMe and donated. Some of you donated way too much money and I just, I do not have the words to thank you except for thank you. I greatly appreciate that. This again adds me another workhorse to my clan here of printers and I'm able to get so many more filaments done, reviews done, because I can have four and five printers going right now that I have working and it's just been fantastic. So thank you so much guys and thank you John at Folger Tech for sending the filament. I've gone through I think half of it now and it's all good stuff. And if you guys haven't seen my Folger Tech filament review, go check up here and check that one out. Uh, it's great stuff. And I highly recommend it to everyone if you're looking for some budget filament. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, big thumbs up and give a thumbs up to everyone who participated and helped me getting this printer. I didn't pay a dime for this. Just thank you guys. So it's awesome. If you guys want to support me, if you didn't do it, the GoFundMe, if you want to support me other ways, down below is going to be Patreon. Donate me a dollar more, greatly appreciate it. A lot of the guys that donated are already patrons, so they're putting out a lot towards me. Again, thank you so much. If you want to support me without spending your money, down in the video description will be a bunch of fill links. Do your daily shopping with those. I greatly appreciate it. All the snips that come back from that end up going here to the channel to help me buy more things. If you guys check out some other content right over here, it'd be a couple other videos. Go ahead, check that out. See what you like. I hope you subscribe. Thank you for watching, and until next time, happy printing.